of you to drop by. Okay, what do you want to do? Play on the networker? Cool. How many people are playing? All alone. Wanna go online? Okay, tell me this. What's your name? Great, that takes care of that. So, my solitary companion, do you need instructions? No instructions. Okay, see you later. where high culture and pop culture collide. Hello and welcome to the cliche episode where you're guaranteed to have more fun than a one-armed monkey at an Elvis convention. I don't know what that means, but it sure sounds like fun. Yep, this is it. You don't know Jack. I'm glad to see you had nothing more productive to do than sit and play a computer game by yourself. Well, to each their own, I guess. Okay, take your seats, please. It's time for liftoff. All you have to do now is buzz in and we'll get a value for the next question. Let's see what this one comes to. $4,000. Let's have a big warm welcome for high-fiving Hindu gods. So, it says here that a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well then... If the Hindu god Vishnu has a bird in each hand, how much would they be worth in the bush? Four... Come on, take it! The Hindu god Vishnu has four hands, so with a bird in each one, that adds up to roughly eight in the bush. And that's worth about, uh, what, buck fifty? Buzz in for the value. The reward for this one is 3500 bucks. The category is Chicken Soup for the Soul in Hell. Okay, let's go. If in Hell, it's not so much the heat, but the humidity, which of these should the damned souls there watch out for on the way? Go for it. Oh, must have hit the wrong key. It happens. Uh, does this ring a bell? Welcome everyone to hell. You'll notice it's hot, but let me tell you, it's a dry heat. Okay, I lied. It's actually more like being trapped in Liberace's armpit while he sits in a sauna wearing a rubber suit. <laughs> Go ahead and choose a value. Let's see the amount on this one. Thirty-two fifty. Hey, I know. How about... Now that definitely smells like teen spirit. All right, now put on your tiara and strapless dress and get ready to type because this next one's a fill-in-the-blank. We've got spirit. Yes, we do. We've got spirit. It's yours if you want it. The cheer goes, we've got spirit, yes we do, we've got spirit, how about you? <laughs> and then it continues and continues back and forth one after another, we've got spirit, no, 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 we've got spirit, you, no, I got the spirit, you think you've got spirit, no, no, we've got spirit, hey, shut up, no, you shut up, ah! Take a value. Here's your total value for this one. $3,000. Your category is going to be shut up. Just shut up. You know, I get the feeling that some cliches have been around a lot longer than we think. For instance, take a look at this newspaper clipping. First, uh, shout out to Jesus for this victory against the Spanish Armada. We took it one battle at a time. Go on, do it! 
The Irish? Yeah, sure. And they defeated the Armada with what? Potato cannons? I'm sorry. Forgive me, please. I'm sorry. That was a really bad stereotype. Hey, I'll tell you what. Tonight at the bar, I'm going to buy every Irishman in the place a drink on me. Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Uh, that quote came from the head coach of the English Navy that kicked the Spanish Armada's butt. Yeah, it was a really exciting fight, but, you know, to be honest, most people just watched it to check out the hilarious Spanish Inquisition Doritos commercial at halftime. Go ahead and grab an amount. The total amount for... 2,500. This category is... Give of yourself, your icy cold self. Think fast, it's question time. Which of the following people truly has cold hands, warm heart? Salvation Army worker with Riggs disease, Red Cross worker with Raynaud's disease. It's yours if you want it! Ah, yes, yes, I see, I see. You definitely have a severe case of not-so-bright disease. The correct answer is... Raynaud's disease makes your hands and feet icy cold. But hey, look at it this way. If you go to hell, a lot of people will want to snuggle with you. And isn't that what hell's all about? Go ahead and pick an amount. The value for this question is 4,500. Here's a little something I call pulling a Yorkshire Terrier out of your hat. Hey kids, it's Howdy Doody time. If New York street magician David Blaine wanted to teach his old dog one of his tricks, which of these could he do? Go on, do it! <laughs> My buddy David is a famous street magician who, in his most famous trick, buried himself alive under a New York City street for a whole week. It would have been a really impressive trick if there weren't already a bunch of people buried under New York City streets. Choose an amount. I bet you're going to become very intimate with that value. Prepare yourself for the steely gaze of a Dissertat. This Dissertat category name is... Hi, I'm a fish and I have a drinking problem. Okay, now I'm going to read off seven different things and for each one I want you to tell me if it's the name of a mixed drink or the name of a fish. I see, you got this thing down. I'm just going to put your 30 seconds on the clock, all right? Let the games begin. Fuzzy Navel, drink or fish? Neon Tetra. Cherry Barb. My Tai. Spot Hidden Raspberry. Caribbean Grasshopper. One more. Saddleback Butterfly. That's all zero. Not bad, not bad. Let's add your winnings to your total. You know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that wasn't half bad. Pick any amount. For this one, I'll give you 4,500. Shake hands with, give me a hand, but not a real disembodied one. Okay, for this next question, I'm going to require the help of one of our stagehands. Hey, Bob? Bob, can you come here a minute? Yeah, what's up, chicken butt? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Bob. I need you to put down those lights and go get me some coffee. <laughs> Say it. Don't spray it. Well, you, you know what, Bob? I, I, I didn't actually spray it, okay? So I want you to stop working on the lighting and give me some coffee. <laughs> Your mother? What, what did you say? You know what, Bob? I, I think you're just some jerk electrician who's hung one too many lights. What do you think about that? Huh. I know you are, but what am I? Well, let's see. Am I a best boy? A gaffer? Go for it! Yeah, Schmitty may call me a f***ing asshole, yeah, but technically I'm a gaffer, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what else you are. Technically you're a f cow sucker. 
I'm rubber and you're glue, and whatever you say bounces off me and sticks on you. Really? Well, then, you know what? Then I'm a complete freaking moron, Bob. Don't have much to say to that, do you, Bob? I'm sorry about that. Let's move on. Time to choose a value. Well, I'll be gosh darned. $3,000. Get yourself ready for... Warning, tobacco companies may be stupid. Ready? Catch this. What was the straw that broke Joe Camel's back? Charges of publicly displaying a phallus. Charges of enticing... Come on, take it! Back in 97, my close personal friends at tobacco giant R.J. Reynolds had to pay a huge settlement because of charges that Joe Camel was targeting children. Now, of course, the good folks at R.J. Reynolds promised to clean up their act, and in 1998, they came out with a new mascot, Gil Goody, the straight-A honor student who does community service, plays in the band, and then gets beaten up after school every day by the cool kids who smoke. Value time. The total amount for this one is going to be seven grand. Hey, guess what it's time for? It's time for... Make a race test run. Remember, you're going to get more cash if you can solve it quickly. Right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth seven grand. Okay, now, take a look at this gibberish and tell me what phrase it rhymes with. And, of course, ignore that pesky punctuation. Keg, sirs, chant the who's blurs. Make me proud, type in your answer and hit return. If there's one lesson my mother always taught me, it's don't dress like a woman in front of your boss. If there were two lessons she taught me, then yeah, the other one would be beggars can't be choosers. Buzz in for your amount. And this one's gonna be worth 2,250 smackers. Up next, Margaret Hatcher. Okay, politicians are eggheads. That's a given. But, which of these sayings best describes the attendance of U.S. cabinet members to a State of the Union address? It's yours if you want it! No, no, no. But hey, did I tell you? My brother, the goose, had a daughter. Yeah, that makes her my geese. Take a look at this. Oh, we're so very, very clever, aren't we? During a State of the Union address, one cabinet member is left out of the audience in case a massive disaster takes out everyone in the Capitol building. Boy, can you imagine? That might someday leave us with the Secretary of Agriculture as the President. My fellow Americans, we do not need to be alarmed by the recent discovery that India possesses cabbage. Grab a value. Let's see what the total amount of 1500 I believe this one is called, Get a Piece of the Rock Yourself, Jerk. See what you can do with this one. Considering the name of the month's traditional birthstone, when might you have the best luck getting blood from a stone? Mark, go for it. The bloodstone is the traditional birthstone of March, so you may want to start squeezing stones in the month of March. Hey, remember, you tend to get a lot more blood if you squeeze really sharp stones. Buzz in for the amount. The value for this one is 1250. This one's called, if you can't beat a dead horse, beat a live one. Hey, did you ever hear that cliche, don't look a gift horse in the mouth? It's good advice. Unless your gift horse is filled with an army of Greek soldiers waiting to kill you in your sleep, then you might want to take a peek. When it was given to him as a gift, who should have looked in the Trojan horse's mouth? 
Go on, do it! Mm, no. King Priam was then a little more suspicious when the Greek... Particularly when you consider that only a year earlier, he fell for the old giant wooden goat joke. Time to pick a value! This one comes in at $1,000. Well, look what I found. I'd like to thank my ferret. All right, I realize it's almost the end of the episode, and I know it's a big cliche, but there are just so many people I have to thank. Oh, golly, where do I start? Well, of course, I just have to thank my agent, and my hairdresser, and my loving life partner, and my car repair man, my plumber, my accountant, and my dog groomer and meter maid, and my mom, and Judy, and all my fellow actors, and my florist, and God, and the president, and my grocer, and the mailman, and all my buddies down at Barney's. Hey, guys! And my neighbors, Paul and Joan, and Boris Yeltsin. Well, he's not my neighbor, but I'd like to thank him. I'd like to thank all the star makers and the dreamers. Keep on dreaming! And those who support the whales, and oh, I almost forgot, my masseuse. Thank you, thank you, I just love you all! Oh, crap, who'd I forget to thank? My plumber, my teachers, the star makers, or the man- Come on, take it! Damn it! I feel awful! They were so instrumental in molding me as a... a person? How about a value? All right, then. Grab hold of something. You are about to embark upon the attack. You should already know how this works. So let's get right to it. Here's your clue. Watch where you put that thing. Hey, where did I put that thing? Oh, now I remember. So I hope it makes you stronger. Let's see if it kills your final score. There it is. Wow, that was an intense game. That was really thrilling. You were by far the best player we had. Now do me a favor. Look to your left. Now look to your right. And repeat after me. Johnson's magic powder will make you invisible. Me? Yes, you. Really? How? Just add water and drink. Try it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Look in the mirror. It uh doesn't seem to be working. Ah, but close your eyes now. <gasps> oh my God! It's a miracle. I can't see myself. This stuff really works. Miss.